story time. Today's story is the talk conversations between a black father and his son. I remember conversations atop my father's knee. Away from the world, we spent hours talking about the man I was coming to be. I always knew we were about to have the talk. We'd always sit down unless we were going on a walk. Or we'd ride in his car because the setting was never the key. I was captivated by his presence, wrapped up by his belief in me. His tone would switch from playful to hopeful. His rhythm and blues oozed with melodic soul. He spoke of the price he paid each time he passed society's toll. He spoke of a dream delivered to millions by a king. He spoke of how slaves hid messages when they would pray and sing. He told me about the Tuskegee Airmen who flew around the world. He talked of a better place for little black boys and little black girls. Time and time again, my father reminded me that royalty ran through my veins. He told me my black was beautiful and that it could never be contained. He told me about joy. He told me about pain. Oftentimes we would laugh. More often we would cry. When we talked about racism, I saw pain in his eyes. He speak of people with hate in their heart. Furthest from the light, they were born in the dark. They'll hold you back if you let them curse you and try to make you respect them but never give in he would whisper move on make a difference and make right their sins why me i plead how could they hate me when they don't even know me black men were dying in the streets i need him to explain it more slowly Lean closer, leaning closer, I could feel his, his ice cold words spill onto my neck. Seek justice, my son, and always demand respect. For some will try to hurt you with their words or throw rocks and stones. But when they go low, you go high and leave them with their hatred to call their own. We talked for hours as time would fly by. From our rooftop, I posed questions and he'd dish out answers as we'd watch the sunrise. He'd speak of the shape of hope and the wings of freedom. There come a day, he'd say, when my people would need you to lead them. So be witty like Langston and be outspoken like Newton and be ready to be mistaken for a thug or a gangster. They'll fear you because they don't know you or call the police if they cannot control you. Yet when the time comes, you must stay true. Remain calm, put your hands up and pray they don't shoot. The stories he tell were sometimes hard to believe. My friends say they don't see color. I don't know what you mean. We all see colors in the stories they tell. Living life blindly is foolish and will cause us all to fail. We must be, we must see the beauty in our differences unapologetically and unveiled. We're from different races in distant places but avoiding tough conversations our history erases. As we grew older, our conversations became colder. My father spoke of grave diggers and colonists who robbed and stole and how from the backs of camels thieves shot off the great sphinx of Giza's African nose. He spoke of many, he spoke of many, 
of our people who sit in jail, wrongfully accused. The power of an education, he said, would decide whether I'd win or lose. It's okay to cry, he'd reassure me, but never to lie. Speak truth to make a trap for fools and watch your back with the all-seeing eye. Be tough, but be kind. Smile through the pain and remind yourself that you'll be just fine. Be proud, but never filled with pride. Think of others first for a woman's happiness. Never hesitate to step to the side. Encourage them to shine and make loving them your routine. They are the most important people in our lives. They create life. They are our queens. So make me and your mother proud by becoming the man we're destined to be. Show your chocolate heart for the entire world to see. For it's more than just living. We've got to remain alive. As black men, we have to inspire one another. But most of all, <clears throat> we have to survive by any means necessary. Ooh, come on. Ooh.